So what we have set up is the ventilator as it would normally be used with the addition of proper um, pressure transducers. So what you would use for arterial um, pressures. Um, and then that's on a monitor. Um, and um, so we can actually read what is the ventilator generating pre tube and post tube, so being in lungs. Um, and this actually reads in mercury, um, whereas this is set in water. So you wouldn't expect this to be 20 on 5 just because there's a slight conversion, but 18 on, 18 on 4 would be the equivalent okay, if you're doing that. And then we've got this giving us our pressure count, so we can see red is pre tube, yellow is post tube. So even on a big 5.5 tube, you can see that there is a difference between what it does pre and post tube. We generally you know, ventilate well on those kind of tubes. Um, when we're using these, um, we, you can have it set in various ways. You can have the pressure curves across the whole screen, um, or you can have it half and half, and you can choose how you have the curve set up. Uh, and then on this side, it has your parameters. So we've got 20 on 5 with an eye time of 0.8, which is the manufacturer's settings. Um, if I'm ventilating, I tend to go through to the values page 7. So here, I've got all the numbers that I, I need. So I'm not having to flick through anything uh, to see what's happening. The most important value to look at is your time of volume, um, because that's the one that you'll see changes if anything you're doing is going to help. So all we're going to do now is switch from a, a 5.5 to a size 3 tube. And we'll just let that settle. <coughs> so our tidal volume has dropped, but we'd expect to drop because we've gone to a smaller tube. But if you look at our waves here, what's happened to our waves? Yeah. So pre, it was reading about 15 on 4, so it's now reading 14 on 4. So it's not been a great change on what the machine thinks it's doing. But if we look at the P2, which is what we're generating at the end of the tube, you can see that basically we've got 10 on 10 with a mean of 10. So we're not really moving any air in and out. So what would we see on retrieval? So you just switched your patient onto the ventilator from a nice ventilator in the unit, what, what, what are you going to see? Yeah, all your numbers. And so you'd see the stats would start to drop, yeah. your tidal would climb by the room. Yeah. Um, obviously your tidal volumes would be yeah. um, low and then you would just start to yeah. decompensate from that. And you may not have very good chest movement. So normally, what would your normal, because you, you're ICU on you? Oh, I see what you do. Yeah. So, do, what do you normally, if, you, if you've got a child who you've got poor chest movement, you've got a high uh, end tidal, what would be, what can you do with your ventilation to try and uh, improve that? Okay, so, and I'll, I'll do it just because uh, to save time. Uh, so if we go through, and we've currently got a PIP of 20, if, and see, we'll just go back and just uh, see our volume. So we've got time volume of just below 70. So now we're going to change that up to 25. We'll go back to our values page. So we've increased it there from just below 70 to around 80. So it's a slight improvement, it hasn't really done a lot. So we'll just put that back. What else can you change? So I doubt you normally, the normal rationale would be you would, uh, you would speed it up, so you would want to give more to try and get rid of that, so you're getting more air movement to, get, uh, to, to move more air out in, more air out yeah, and tidal down. So if you change your rate from 40, so again we, um, we go to a, we've got a tidal volume around 60, so if we increase that up to 50, <coughs> So our actual our, our tidal volume there has actually dropped. So we've tried the things that you normally do. Um, so we tried manipulating our pressure, we tried manipulating our rate. You said we saw eye time, didn't you? So what would you do to your eye time? 
So let's just go back to it. So normal things haven't changed. So we've got a target volume of 65. We're still on the rate of 40 with our pressures of 25 on five. So we're going to try adjusting our eye time. So if we change our eye time to 1.2, so we're giving more time to get into flow through. Um, we had a tidal volume of around um, 50 to start with, didn't we? So you've got a slight improvement there, but not a, not a vast improvement. So So slowing the weight down and down to a rate of 20. So by going, just changing your eye time, we got probably a 10, 15 millimeter change in the, the, the volume. So it's, it was a slight improvement. But by just by changing the weight, we went from about 80 to 135. So not quite doubled it. We've got almost double what we had when we've done our normal things of increasing the weight and increasing the pressure. The, the number one biggest thing you can do with the oxylog on a small tube is, is slow your weight down. That will make the biggest change. And then you get a slight improvement by increasing your weight. So it's opposite what normal ventilation strategies are, and it's purely for this ventilator because it just doesn't seem to be able to get the flow through a small tube. So you're treating it almost like you would an asthmatic. You want to give longer, slower breaths rather than faster, bigger breaths. And you can see there that we're now getting 12 on 6, where we did have a straight line. It's still not doing quite what it thinks it's doing, but you are getting some sort of chest movement.